Welcome to San Antonio, Texas, and the Alamo for the Valero Alamo Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. A jam-packed Alamo Dome for a, a matchup of ranked teams with number 13 Washington State, a 10-win season, taking on number 24 Iowa State. Cyclones with their highest victory total since 2000. Cougars tied a school record for wins this year. Trying to get to 11 victories on the season. Matt Campbell leading Iowa State onto the field. They won their bowl game last year. They have never won consecutive bowl games. They have won seven of their last eight games coming into tonight and doing that with a true freshman quarterback. They sold out their allotment of tickets. Their opponent today, Washington State, Dave Pash, Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville as well. And speaking of Washington State, coming into the year, not many people knew who their quarterback Gardner Minshew was. And he ends up leading the nation in passing and finishing fifth in the Heisman voting. And you take a look at where he came from. He's from Brandon, Mississippi. He walked on at Troy initially. Instead, I'm going to go to junior college. And then ends up at East Carolina. For a couple of years in Greenville and goes all the way to Pullman turning down Alabama he could have been the number three quarterback with a Crimson Tide and had a GA position after playing football but decided instead to go to Pullman reasons why Gardner Minshew is such a good fit with that guy right there Mike Leach was because they're so similar Greg they are both confident guys very eccentric and neither cares what anybody thinks about them. not even a little bit <laughs> and what's beautiful about Gardner Minshew we've seen quarterbacks from this air raid system in the past put up unbelievable numbers he does it a little differently and it's because he's an athlete the guy can run around so many times when you look at quarterbacks at Texas Tech and at Washington State over the last decade and change They've operated from within the pocket. Gardner Minshew will run around, he'll create, he'll allow his receivers time to uncover while still keeping his eyes downfield. He's been so exciting to watch. And for this program, who've had a lot of really good quarterbacks over the course of their history, very few have had seasons that have rivaled that of what Gardner Minshew's done this year. He's going to have to be at his best, though, because he's going up against a very capable Iowa State team led by a freshman quarterback in Brock Purdy, Tom. Yeah, and Greg, Brock Purdy has done everything that's asked of him, and the season didn't start like he thought it would. When Kyle Kemp, the starter, went down to injury, Brock Purdy was very upset that he was not named the starter, but he didn't make a rash decision. He didn't make a knee-jerk reaction. You know what he did the next day? He went to work, and for the following two weeks, he grinded, and he earned the respect of head coach Matt Campbell, his teammates, and the locker room, and here Iowa State sits behind a freshman quarterback who brings a 7-1 record into this game. All right, Tom, you look at Matt Campbell and the job he's done in just three seasons, three and nine first year, eight wins last year, trying to get nine wins this year for the first time in almost two decades. And Mike Leach, seventh year at Washington State, has led them to four straight bowl games. That's a school record. Washington State won the toss and will receive. Chris Francis will kick it deep. Travell Harris is back for Washington State. We're underway from the Alamo Dome. And Harris has stopped in his tracks at the 21-yard line. 
Here's a little bit more on Gardner Minshew. Brandon, Mississippi, which is just outside of Jackson. He was a terrific student, had a 4.0 GPA. Talked about him going to Troy and ending up then at Northwest Mississippi Community College. He won the Juco National Championship in 2015. Two years at East Carolina. He verbally committed to Nick Saban and then changed his mind when he knew he'd have an opportunity to play right away. Started out hot and has played great throughout the year, but did not have a good apple cut. By far his worst performance of the season. Two picks, no touchdowns. Everybody covered here. And so he's going to check it down to his running back, James Williams. And Williams is knocked down after a gain of a couple. And Gardner Minshew is brings so much swagger to this program. He's so confident. He's unique. And you just gravitate to him. You see him on the field before the game. You see how the teammates respond to him. It's not always at quarterback about your physical skill set. So much of it's about intangibles. And Gardner Minshew checks every single intangible box. Minshew wide open. Patman. And it's a first down out to the 36-yard line in 13. No, Greg, you talk about those intangibles. What people don't realize is that he had to win this job in essentially three and a half weeks. He showed up in fall camp, and not only was he advanced with the scheme, he had the backing of the team in less than a month. Here's Borgie, the backup to James Williams. He does play a lot, but could also be because of Williams fumbling the ball. Minshew, and it's dropped. Would have been a first down, but Winston had to go right through his hands. Aesop Winston, who caught 48 balls during the regular season, third leading pass catcher. The ball was in the air a long time. From almost the left middle of the field all the way to the boundary, I think Winston might have felt as though that ball hung up a little bit too long and lost a little concentration as it arrived. Ninth straight year, the Pac-12 and Big 12 have squared off in this game. The Pac-12, as a conference, hasn't won a bowl game in more than a calendar year. Third and four here for Washington State. Pressure coming. Borgie on the catch, but he's not going to get the first down drop at the line of scrimmage by Jamal Johnson. Fourth down and four, and Washington State will punt it away. It's a really good blitz from Iowa State. John Haycock. Coming with a little three up the middle, you'll see all that action. And number 12, Greg Eisworth, he's the guy that's not accounted for in the protection. He comes free, and they force the ball out of Minshew's hands a little early. Dragicevic will punt it away. Tariq Milton is deep. Gonna let this go. And Washington State trying to locate the ball, and they down it at the one yard line. Dylan Sherman down there for Washington State. So freshman quarterback Brock Purdy backed up. He was the Gatorade Player of the Year in Arizona at Perry High School. Had only two FBS offers until about two days before the early signing period. Had a chance to go to Alabama as a preferred walk-on. Ends up going to Iowa State and becoming the first true freshman quarterback in 23 years to start a game. He came in relief of Zeb Nolan in the Oklahoma State game through for 400 yards or had 400 yards in total offense. Five touchdowns. Brock's family in attendance. His dad, a former college baseball player. And the white hat, Sean, played at Miami and also in the minors. And because of his time in Miami, Brock Purdy, a diehard Dan Marino fan growing up. Montgomery tackled for a loss at the two-yard line. Willie Taylor has really come on for Tracy Clay's defensive late with the big stick. That's the one guy on this defense that wasn't a factor early on, but as the season's gone on, you've seen him get a little more comfortable. Now, right there, he should make the play. He's unaccounted for right. in the run game. But when they're there, you got to make them. And oftentimes, the first defender to arrive, to David Montgomery, the running back, doesn't usually bring him down because Montgomery's really good in the open field. A good play by Taylor. Purdy uh, have to take the snap here from the middle of his end zone. 
And Montgomery able to get out of the end zone and fights to get back to the line of scrimmage, but Peyton Pallor was all over it. Pallor, their leading tackler, guy who's a graduate student, legacy player at Washington State. His dad, grandfather, great-grandfather all played for the Cougs. Hey, Greg, I'll tell you, I'm standing right behind the Iowa State offensive line, and this offensive line cannot get up to the second level. You just mentioned two back-to-back -back unblocked defenders Palua being the most recent, the defensive front for Washington State holding the point very nicely. Purdy gets hit as he gets rid of it. Incomplete, but a flag is down. Contact between Thompson and Matthew Eaton. Thompson, who had the interception on the first drive. Let's see, it could be offensive as well. Defense number 34. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. And there was a lot of contact between both players. Boy, that, that's. I, I could have seen it go either way. I really could have. I mean, I, if they would have called offensive, I would have understood it. Calling it defensive, I'm perfectly okay with that as well because you have to allow Eaton the chance to go catch the football. It's a I don't huge know, Greg. penalty. I, I didn't see Thompson really do much of anything there. He inhibited, though, Eaton's ability to get vertical on a throw that was slightly overthrown. Purdy over the middle, Butler on the grab into Washington State territory. That's a perfect throw by Brock Purdy on time. Just a nice route too by Butler climbing on the safety and one on one working against Skylar Thomas. Just on a little post route, a nice throw by Purdy getting over the underneath defender. Montgomery and tackled that time by Skylar Thomas. We showed you the missed tackle by Pallor. That's now 81 forced missed tackles by David Montgomery. Very shifty as you saw in that last run. Hard to get down with an ankle tackle, but Skylar Thomas was able to do it there. Uh, Greg, uh, Brock Purdy on that last throw prior to the handoff. Just the level of his ability to change the ball speed, change the arc on the ball, completes that between 17 and 22 yards, led the receiver. Everything about that had nothing to do with a true freshman. That was just a great play by a quarterback. Yeah, over the underneath defender, under the over the top defender. It's a big time throw and feeling the vacancy in the defense. Crony, the backup running back, gets the call here. Knocked down. At the 33-yard line by Dale. That's going to bring up third down. Take a look at our impact players brought to you by Lexus. David Montgomery, we talked about Peyton Pallor for Washington State. Well, these two guys have been the bell cow for the last few years. Montgomery, such a workhorse, has been so steady over the course of his career. And Pallor playing his final game for Washington State. So productive. It has really improved as the season's gone on. He's played over 50 games, too. Went through recently with a local reporter. Remembered every single game he's played in college. That's going to be a pick. It might be going the other way. Intercepted by Marcus Strong. He will take it to the house. There is a penalty flag down. At the seven yard line, did it occur before Marcus Strong reached the end zone? 71 yard return if it holds up. Well, let's see where the call is, John O'Neill. Unsportsmanlike conduct, taunting on the intercepting team. 15 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. So no touchdown. Wow. And when you do that in the field of play, that's a rule that went in about seven or eight years ago. Do you taunt a defender, a team, or a, an opponent, which Strong clearly did there to Brock Purdy? You, the touchdown is waved off, and it's a 15-yard penalty. Of course, the, the interception, though, it's a great play jumping the underneath route, but my goodness, you just wipe seven points off the board. Go celebrate with your teammates, man. It's just flat stupid. So first down for Washington State on the 20. Max Borgie will get the carry, and Iowa State all over him in the backfield. Jaquan Bailey was there first, so a loss on the play of about a yard. 
Some blood on the hand of Brock Purdy. A throwing hand. Two interceptions already for Purdy after throwing just five in the regular season. Second down actually in 12 on the 22. And Minshew with time in the pocket going end zone incomplete. Intended for Travell Harris. So a third down and long. So think about it. If you end up having to settle for a field goal and this ends up being a close finish, you'll look right at Marcus Strong. Just making a very, very dumb decision. There's no one rooting harder for that offense right now than number four, who had the touchdown wiped off the board. Minshew on third down and long. Going to go end zone again. Receiver wide open. Touchdown. Renard Bell somehow got free in the middle of the defense. Marcus Strong says, Ooh, okay. <laughs> yeah, he's the happiest man on the field outside of maybe <laughs> Bell, who is on the receiving end of that strike. And there's the Minshew swag walking to the Washington State bench. His 37 touchdown pass, fifth in the country. And a point after makes it 7 0 Washington State. All made possible by the great play by Marcus Strong, stepping in front of the pass intended for Butler. Not the smartest way to the end zone, but his quarterback and Heisman Trophy runner-up make him right by striking first in the Alamo Bowl. 7 nothing. Washington State leads Iowa State. The Cougars have never won 11 games. Six times they've won 10, the last in 2003. Rough start for Iowa State quarterback Brock Purdy. Thrown two interceptions here in eight minutes. Jack Crane kicking it deep. Nuwagu, all time school leader and kick return average. We just let that one sail into the end zone for a touchback, and Purdy gets another chance. <laughs> uh, Gardner Minshew, such a character. Look at his outfit getting on the plane last weekend <laughs> from Pullman, and then there's the entire quarterback room hoisting their head coach, Mike Leach. Set at the outset uh, of the telecast with Minshew mania going wild, everybody donning the mustaches. What a great fit Gardner Minshew and Mike Leach are together. No, so good. So good. It's been such a joy to watch him. One of the most exciting quarterbacks in all of college football. What a year he's had. More spread oriented and involving running backs in the passing game. I absolutely think he has a chance to play on Sundays if he falls into the right situation. Well, similar to James White with the Patriots. Minshew in trouble gets hit and down he goes. Jaquan Bailey, Willie Harvey, both there for the clones. Fourth down. This is just a handful. I mean, you have a pass rusher working on the edge against a running back. And for as good as James William is, catching the ball out of the backfield, he's a bit of a liability in protection. That's why so often you see Washington State opt to put all five receivers, eligible receivers, out in the field of play as opposed to keeping that back in protection. Tough matchup there for Washington State. Not a good punt by Dragicevic, but it does take a couple of Cougar hops inside the 25 and doesn't turn out too bad. 41 yard punt. Iowa State started the year 0 and 2. Their first game of the season against South Dakota State got canceled. So they had to start with their rivals. Iowa, always a tough way to start a year. They lose that game. We had them against Oklahoma, lost that game. They go 1 and 3 to start the year, but then they get rolling. They're only lost the rest of the way at Texas. Brock Purdy, 6 and 1 as a starter, also came in early in relief to beat Oklahoma State. Ranked in the final regular season, AP poll for the first time in 42 years. 
And a chance to get win number nine. Matt Campbell did such a good job at Toledo in four years there and in three years now at Iowa State. And the exciting thing is the best is yet to come. Almost everybody's back off this team next year. Jet sweep. And it's past the 35-yard line. Nuwagu brought down at the 38, a first down gain of 14. And that'll end the first quarter here in San Antonio. Three combined turnovers between the two teams and just seven points. Cougars with the lead after one. The massive 82-inch Samsung QLED TV. Red Bull gives you wings. Cats will do anything for the irresistible taste of Temptation's treats. What are you doing? Oh, hey, check this out. Temptations. Cats can't resist. Yellow light. You could hit the brakes. But your double chalupa with double the seasoned beef isn't wearing a seatbelt. Safety first. Get the $5 double chalupa box from Taco Bell. I still can't believe how incredible the screen is on the new iPhone. This season, for every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities. Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. ESPN Plus, your home for more sports, more schools, more conferences, more ESPN. Start your free trial today by downloading the ESPN app or by visiting ESPNplus.com. Dave Pash, Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville in San Antonio, 7-0 Washington State. As we start the second quarter, true freshman quarterback Brock Purdy through two first quarter interceptions. Settled down, though, the last five minutes or so. Rolling out here, in trouble. Spins away from a defender, and Purdy is close to a first down. How about that play from the freshman? Just a little bit of, yep, spin move, circle. And north and south, well done. They'll keep it with their running back. This time, David Montgomery plows forward into Washington State territory for a first down. Peyton Pelour was not on the field that particular play there. And he ran right between the tackles where normally he would be. You guys, you think of how far this Iowa State team has come, even up front in their offensive line. When Matt Campbell first got here, probably would have told you that his team at Toledo had better players in the offensive line than Iowa State did, and now they're a team known for running the football. They have no senior starters on that offensive line, only seven senior starters on the entire roster. So as Greg said, the best is yet to come. But Purdy hit here, throws a jump pass that Butler catches. And then he's crushed at the 30-yard line. But it's a 16-yard gain and a first down. Butler's shaken up. That was a nice job by Purdy evading the would-be tackler and having just enough arm strength to get it about 15, 20 yards downfield to Butler as he crossed midfield. Well done. Montgomery with a huge running lane. Inside the 25. Butler. Guys, but Butler's still down. He went down the moment he got to the sideline. And they've been attending to him as yet to get up off the turf. And it was Marcus Strong that hit his left leg. Now, so hopefully he'll be able to enter the ball game here pretty quickly. But if it took him some time, you'd understand why. <laughs> Second down and eight. Here comes pressure from behind, and Purdy didn't see it. It's Marcus Strong. With the sack. This is a really good design. You're going to see motion across, which frees up strong to blitz off the edge. And Purdy has no idea that he's coming. How about the start to this football game, the first 18 minutes? Marcus Strong has an interception. Didn't have that pick six take, taken off the board, but we moved past that. What have you done for me lately? He has a sack, and he's made a few big plays against Iowa State's passing game. What a start so far for the junior. Ten-yard loss makes it third down and 18. Purdy moving around in the pocket. Now leaving the pocket. Throws, and it's incomplete. Jones couldn't hang on. 
And they're out of field goal range. Fourth down and 18. This is a well thrown football on the run by Purdy. Uh, you think he was throwing and eating there? <laughs> Not sure. Both were open. Both had a chance to make a play. It's just a tough part of the field, too, because you're on the 38 yard line, but it's far too long to go for it. You have to punt it. Just if they pick that up, they at least are back in field goal range with a possibility of going for it on fourth and medium if they so choose. I mean, it did look like number 23, Matthew Eaton, was the guy that Purdy was looking at. Then all of a sudden, Deshante Jones came into the picture, but Jones couldn't hang out of the ball. And fair caught by Sweet at the 11 yard line. So Gardner Minshew back on the field when we return. Always having fun. He says, We've never lost a party this year. So far, they're winning this game. Seven zip behind Minshew's touchdown pass. Dave Pash, Greg McElroy, and Tom Luganbill back at the Valero Alamo Bowl with Washington State in front of Iowa State. Seven nothing early in the second quarter. So. Minshew mustache mania is going wild in the Northwest. Here are some of Gardner's favorite mustaches. Burt Reynolds, of course, Aaron Rodgers when he had it, and White Goodman, yeah. Ben Stiller in uh, dodgeball. You can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. That's true. Was, he, he was with the Globo Jim Purple Cobras. He was. Tough team that year. Taser, laser, phaser. Yeah. They lost, though, to average shows. Spoiler alert. Minshew throws complete wide open was Patman and he is out all the way to the 35 yard line for 23 yards. I really like this kid Desmond Patman. And most of these wide receivers are all kind of interchangeable but Tay Martin and Desmond Patman are the two guys that that really cause a lot of issues from a matchup standpoint. If you try to play them man to man you're in trouble because those guys are long and physical and go up and make plays on the football. So first down in Iowa State territory. Williams with a nice cut inside the 40. Gain of seven on the play for James Williams. You know, guys, going back to, to Gardner Minshew and trying to think of a comparison, Greg, as you were talking about what his prospects could be at the next level, kind of reminds me of a little bit more of an athletic version of Cody Kessler, who is, has carved out a, a really nice role as a reserve. Limited in terms of physical skills, good athlete, but extremely bright. They fake the jet sweep, Minshew, and it's caught. They had the first down, and it's going to be close. Looked like Calvin got it anyway. And it will be a first down for the Cougars inside the 33 yard line. That's a good comparison, is, is Cody Kessler. That would make some sense. Matt Barkley also a little similar. Uh, I know it's both an SC guys, but yeah. a little similar with, with stature and, and arm talent. I would also say Taylor, uh, Tyler Heineke, who, who was yeah. who just started a week ago. He's from Old Dominion, maybe not the most well-known name, but a solid backup. Started a game for the Panthers a couple weeks ago and got hurt, but will probably have a decent NFL career as well. Another pass play here, Minshew. And it's caught inside the 30 by Calvin Jackson. Gain of seven. True freshman middle linebacker Mike Rose in coverage there. Mike Rose has been really solid for this Iowa State team. And, and this freshman group, I mean, between him, obviously on defense, he's going to anchor that defense, what would likely be the next few years. And, and Brock Purdy, they have some foundational building block pieces on both sides of the football. It can not only impact the game physically, but from a leadership standpoint, too, can have a huge effect on your team. Getting the first down is Calvin. Close to the 20-yard line. Regan Northrup, who is Willie Harvey's replacement on defense for Iowa State, made the tackle. Boy, Greg Eisworth, number 12, who's normally so effective as an open field tackler. Read it, came up field, just missed the tackle. Would have prevented the first down conversion. Ninth play of the drive coming up. Washington State leading 7 0. Minshew swings it out to Williams in space. Hurdles a defender and pushed out of bounds inside the 15 yard line. That was PV that Williams jumped over. Now PV's only 5'8, five, 5'9. Five, 
Williams is so good after the catch. <laughs> he's just, he's so good with the ball in his hands. He has a great feel for defenders. Just really have enjoyed watching this young man play this year and over the last several years up there in Pullman. Does a great job, great fit for this offense. Minshew waiting for somebody to get open. Still looking, keeping his eyes downfield. Now he throws it away. And that is one of the benefits, right, of playing in this offense. You have enough time to continue to look downfield. I mean, the NFL, you always got to keep your eyes downfield. Can't pay attention to the rush. They don't give up a lot of sacks, Washington State. Washington State's really good up front. I mean, their offensive line. Now, the scheme helps, and Minshew does a good job of getting it out. And they do a solid job in protection, but you know, this scheme... It makes it difficult to rush the passer and you don't want to blitz either because if you blitz then you vacate zones at the second level and Minshew an experienced quarterback more often than not he's going to find that vacated area if you bring an extra defender. He'll play in the senior bowl so will left tackle Andre Dillard. Minshew off play action first down catch for Patman got a little shove too from Abraham Lucas the right tackle. And it'll be first and goal from inside the 10 yard line here. Well, guys, this is the fourth consecutive year by some publication that Washington State has had an All American play within their offensive line. So this is a group that's been very effective, but it's really been about Gardner Minshew's ability to anticipate throws, not hold on to the ball, be decisive, and get it out of his hand. Very decisive. I mean, he gets through progressions lightning quick. For a guy that's only been running this offense since May, it's pretty remarkable. The back Williams is open, and he gets leveled at the seven-yard line by Anthony Johnson. True freshman from St. Petersburg, Florida, making the hit. It'll be second and goal for Washington State. So far, Iowa State defensively has actually done a pretty decent job. I mean, so far, Gardner Minshew's dropped back 20 times. He only has 125 yards to show for it, so all the throws are underneath. They've done a pretty good job of rallying up and tackling. They only allowed one big play, and that was the touchdown play a little earlier to Bell, but for the most part, Washington State's just been very methodical. Three, four, five, six yards of play. Minshew on second and goal looking. In trouble, gets out of there, fakes the pass, takes off, dives, touchdown! balance and effort as the legend grows in Pullman of Gardner Minshew. Fourth rushing touchdown this season. 41st overall. And it's 14-0 Washington State. So many times this year, Gardner Minshew has done it with his arm. But don't forget about that athleticism. That's what makes him different. He scrambles, becomes a magician, and finds his way to Pater as they extend the lead to 14 here in San Antonio. He is the school record holder now for most passing yards in a single season, over 4,600. And again, nobody knew the name coming into this year. He's a grad transfer from East Carolina, bounced around Troy Junior College, ECU, then all the way to Pullman. For his one and only season, Nuagu on the return for Iowa State. They need a good return. And they get one. He's out past the 30-yard line. Brock Purdy going to work. Gets rid of that one. Butler back on the field. Gets the first down. Averaged over 22 yards per catch. Ten plays of 40 yards or more this year. This is the part of the offense they got to get going now. Butler needs to get involved. He needs to take over this game. 
make some plays after the catch. Nice job right there. That was a 24-yarder. Now he's wide open in the middle of the field. Dragged down inside the 10, but Butler getting loose in this secondary for Iowa State. Just one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, press coverage in the slot. And he beats Skylar Thomas right over the top. Not often you see Butler in one-on-one -on -one coverage versus press. Got to take advantage there. Purdy's going to run it here. Inside the five, gets a block for Butler. And it's a touchdown for Iowa State. Brock Purdy. Let's see if he got in. Yep. What a great answer by Iowa State. Washington State puts together a methodical 88-yard touchdown drive on 13 plays. You come right back and answer with a couple big plays to your star wide receiver Butler and your freshman quarterback finishes it off on the zone read keeper. Purdy comes in and fights off two interceptions tonight to lead that drive, hitting Hakeem Butler a couple of times on the perimeter, then doing the rest with his feet to cut that Washington State lead in half. Iowa State able to cut into that Washington State lead with a Brock Purdy rushing touchdown. Plenty of time, though, for the Washington State offense to go to work. Harris on the return for the Cougars. Trying to find a running lane. He does on the outside. Past the 30. Breaks a tackle. And finally banged out a play near midfield. It's a really nice return from Harris. If you look at Iowa State on the left side of the screen, they just lose contain. <laughs> nice job out in front. And on the field return, picks up a nice chunk of yardage to give this Washington State offense a really good field position. First down on the 46-yard line, Minshew to Borgie, and he had a DN trying to run with him on the far side, and then Borgie gets swallowed by Northrop, but it's a first down into Iowa State territory. Tell you those swing routes to the backs and getting it out to the flat, it really can exhaust you on defense because you are constantly running sideline to sideline, Greg. It's just the toss sweep. Yeah. I mean, it's a forward pass, but it's a toss sweep and it's an extended handoff. That is Washington State's version of their run game. Minshew gonna dump it off again to Borgie. Breaks a tackle inside the 35-yard line. So the records continue to pile up for Gardner Minshew. School record for completions, 451. It's amazing, right? That's 13 amazing games. Number. <laughs> That's an amazing number. I mean, to have that many completions in 13 games is remarkable. How many, how many in a career did you have? Oh, but probably under that. If I were to guess, I mean, probably. Maybe 450, four, maybe just right around that. I mean, it's amazing. Second and two. Minshew leaves the pocket, jukes a defender, and gets the first down. Three minutes to go. They have all their timeouts remaining. Minshew not afraid to still run the middle of the field after nearly getting his head taken off by Willie Harvey. He shakes Spears that time. He's a pretty good runner, man. I mean, he really can create. He's not going to make a living on the ground, but he's capable to pick up a few chunk yards plays a game with his legs if nothing's open in the passing game. Minshew in trouble this time. And throws it high and out of bounds. And what a shot Brian Peavy gave the receiver, Jameer Calvin, on the far sideline. Man. Well, Iowa State has found a blitz that gives them some fits. And you see Peavy, mm, a little bit of a push. There is the ball sailed. The yard marker's got a Boy. compound fracture. Was that, was that targeting there by Peavy? 
No, launching? It didn't look like it. Not a launch. Are you like sure? He extended his arms, pushed him out of bounds. So they got the down marker fixed, the clock fixed as well. Second and ten on the 29. Minshew on a crossing route. Calvin with a move inside the 20. And down close to the 16-yard line. Another first down. Washington State in the red zone. These wide receivers, I mean, they're so interchangeable. Now, Calvin is a young kid that's got some explosiveness. Got to refine his game a little bit, refine his crack. It's going to be a good one here in the years to come, especially out of the slot. All these wide receivers, you have to count for so many. Ten different guys catch the ball almost every single week for Washington State. Paul Borgie taken down for a loss of two. Matt Leo was there first. Uh, Iowa State has certainly shown up in unbelievable numbers. And let's see now, after lost yardage on first and goal, what does Mike Leach and this Cougar offense have up their sleeve? On second to goal, Minshew in trouble. And he was wrestled down. Bailey was there first and then cleaned up by Spears. Iowa State trying to decide to we call a timeout here because it's third and goal. We want our offense to get another shot. Washington State already has. Okay, so that allows Matt Campbell to save a timeout. One timeout left for Washington State, two for Iowa State. Third down to goal from the nine. Minshew taking a shot. Patman goes upstairs, pulls it down. Touchdown. He's a big target at 6-4. Needed to go to about 6-10 or 11 to grab that one. Fabulous catch by Patman. And a great throw by Gardner Minshew. They always say when you're down in the red zone, find your biggest targets and throw it where only they can go and get it. He finds a six foot four target in the back of the end zone, throws it to us or no one. And his receiver, Patman, who's really come on strong in the second half of the season, hauls it in for the touchdown. Mazza puts it through, 21-7, Washington State. Minshew now with two touchdown passes and a touchdown run. Crane will kick it deep to Nuwagu. Iowa State with two timeouts and a minute or so left. So it'll come out to the 25. Purdy's pass high but caught by Montgomery on the sideline. Gain of seven. Clock stop with 56 seconds to go. If you're Iowa State, still plenty of time here to go down and see if you can't steal some points before the end of half. You get the ball after halftime. So the opportunity to maybe get two here is huge. Montgomery knew the hit was coming, took the lick. The defender who initiated the hit. Hunter Dale is shaken up. Montgomery a little slow to get up as well. Just a big collision between Montgomery and Dale. And Montgomery going to stay on the field. They're going to run it here on third and four. Montgomery gets the first down, and more. what a cut. And Montgomery close to midfield. The clock at 19 seconds. They're not going to use a timeout. The clock will start on the ready for play. I'm surprised they don't call one of the timeouts. And look how much time they're taking here. Purdy got to do something with it. Got a receiver, seen Buckner, and he hangs on to the ball. What a play. Marcus Strong on the tackle. A timeout with three seconds left. They're going to get a shot at a field goal. It's only his fifth catch of the year. 
Sam Seenbuckner somersaulting because of the hit by Strong, but he hangs out of the football. A big collision. And Marcus Strong, who's been one of the best players on the field tonight, on the receiving end of that blow. You hope he's okay. He's been such a good player tonight for Washington State. Well, if I'm Washington State, I would put a guy back to receive it. All right, knowing that case. Sally is not connected on any of these long ones. Does it have enough? It does, and it's good. We're being told that that was a 51-yarder, which ties an Alamo Bowl record. A great kick. I mean, just crushing it. Great snap, great hold. And plenty of room for a Sally as he connects. Well done by the sophomore. Washington State hasn't lost this year when scoring first. Here's Tom. Well, Coach, two unsportsmanlike conduct penalties, two targeting penalties, a missed call on the movement of the offensive tackle. What were the officials telling you? Well, I, they got a hard job. So the reality of it is we got to keep our composure, and it starts with the head football coach. But, you know, we got to control what we can control here in the second half and take care of the little things. You hurt yourself, self-destructive, particularly in the first quarter. But your kids respond. You get the ball coming out of halftime. What's the message to the group? Yeah, I think just stay the course. You know, this team's dealt with a lot of adversity. So, you know, we know how to do that, and we will. It'll be fun to watch these guys in the second half. All right, thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys. Matt was very smart there because instead of ripping the officials, which you know he wanted to do, just go right to the cliches and get to the locker room. But no doubt he was fired up, got an unsportsmanlike penalty. His team, though, trails by 11 at halftime. When we come back, and then Jesse Joey, the Mercedes Benz halftime report. Welcome back to the Valero Alamo Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. Washington State in search of a program record 11th win leading Iowa State 21 to 10 as we get ready to start the second half. Dave Pash, Greg McElroy and Tom Luganville man a wild first half. We had a taunting on a pick six that negated the touchdown. We had a missed false start on a Washington State touchdown. Iwagu on the return for Iowa State through a gap and then it closed at about the 27 yard line. Well, Iowa State was undisciplined in that second quarter. A pair of targeting calls here. And this is a key player, Willie Harvey, going upstairs on Minshew. And then, again, by the letter of the law, the crown of the helmet there by Iwazarike. Matt Campbell gets an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. If he gets another one, he will be ejected from the game. So the two Iowa State players already ejected. And they're fifth in the country, coming in in fewest penalty yards, but already at 48 because of the 315 yarder. And Matt Campbell said we just got to keep our composure and I think that they were able to do that after a difficult start but quit shooting themselves in the foot with some of these penalties. Brock Purdy had a rushing touchdown but two interceptions in that first half so he hands it off to David Montgomery on the first play and he gets the first down a gain of 15. Here's Tom. Well guys for Mike Leach of Washington State this is a big series on defense coach told me that he felt pretty proud of the defense except for the explosive plays that they gave up particularly in the second quarter offensively he said he's really really pleased with their execution and they've had to earn it because he called this defense that they're seeing tonight probably the best one that he's seen all season long. I can certainly understand why Iowa State does such a good job of making you go methodically down the field and that's exactly what Washington State did they were methodical and they kept themselves in manageable situations and when they got in the red zone they executed at a high level by converting on those red zone opportunities. Matthew Eaton had the catch on the last play so it's first down at the 48 of Washington State. Purdy throwing to Butler and he's got it at the 20 yard line. He's their big play go to guy and it's a gain of 28 and they're in the red zone already. Great job of Purdy recognizing the one on one coverage against the safety Skylar Thomas. They decided to bring that corner pressure and he knew that he had a six foot six target his star wide receiver in a very good position to catch a deep ball. 
Montgomery it's smothered at the line of scrimmage Thomas who was beaten on that last play as you said Greg comes back and makes the tackle there so it's second down and long. It's a very important drive for Iowa State you got momentum going in to halftime into the locker room with the long 51 yard field goal but for Brock Purdy in particular consistency get some confidence on early throws here and now you're in the red area. They fake it to him and hand it off to Montgomery waits for the hole to open and he's inside the 10. Man, Montgomery such a good player so patient. And Washington State had to respect Riel Mitchell there. Yeah and they were obviously paying attention to the third string quarterback I think a trick play or something along the lines of that. So what does Matt Campbell opt to do offensively use him as a decoy and then give it to your star running back going the other direction really good use of misdirection right there by Iowa State's offense. So now they go back to a two tight end look here and take Mitchell off the field. Montgomery dropped Peyton Pallor with a big stick. Pallor graduate leading tackler on the team pursuing his master's degree in teaching he's been an all academic Pac 12 five times that's a conference record he's been so productive for this team really anchored a group that is so underrated I mean they're really solid defensively Tracy Clay's really good coach their D coordinator in his first year was at Minnesota as a D coordinator and a head coach Montgomery gets the carry here breaks a tackle into the end zone touchdown Iowa State and then Montgomery said get off me to Jalen Thompson touchdown for David Montgomery has broken more tackles than anybody in college football the last couple of years and he did it on that run and Iowa State is back within four with a lot of time left what a career he's had have another nice night tonight and it clearly looks like he's going to be the bell cow here in the second half Harris slips at the two yard line. A couple of flags come down. He's tackled at about the 22. Minshew on first down pumps and finds Winston for a first down. All right, how about the second game? Bama OU. Fully expected to be a score -a thon. Two dynamic quarterbacks taking shots downfield. Big play offenses that thrive with. Unbelievable speed and explosiveness at wide receiver. I just like Bama's defense a little too much. They get off the field two or three more times than Oklahoma's does, but they win in what should be an absolute shootout thriller there in Miami. I think Alabama will limit possessions, and the possessions Oklahoma has will have to end in touchdowns. Minshew going to dump it off here to Borgie. Be interesting, guys, based on, remember what Johnny Manziel did to Alabama? Can Kyler Murray do some of the same things? Uh, you know, Alabama's played against some good quarterbacks, but they haven't seen a guy like Kyler Murray this year. Yeah, they also haven't seen a defense like Oklahoma's either. So Alabama's been explosive against good groups from time to time, coming off their worst offensive performance against Georgia, but I just don't know how Oklahoma's going to be able yeah. to slow them down. Kyler Murray might get 40, might get 50 even. Who knows? He's a very capable player with the ball in his hands. Unbelievable talent. Right, One of my favorites I've ever seen. But I don't know if that defense can get off the field against Tua and that Crimson Tide offense. Minshew hits Calvin, and he gets another first down out to the 35-yard line before he's thrown back by Northrop and Peavy. Guys, I tell you, I think one thing that's being glossed over in that matchup is how is Oklahoma going to stop Alabama's run game? We've become so conditioned this year with the explosive plays and the playmakers on the perimeter in Tua. Well, listen, you, 
you got to pick your poison. And if Alabama gets a sense that they can run it early, then they're not going to stop. There's not going to be a need to put the ball in the air. If they can move it on the ground, take away time, and again, limit Oklahoma's possessions. Even if they do, I mean, with those receivers that Alabama has, you know, Iowa State had a lot of success against Oklahoma throwing the ball downfield against those DBs early in the year. They're going to run James Williams here, trying to use his speed to get outside, but he's tracked down by Greg Eisworth, the Big 12 defensive newcomer of the year. First team all Big 12 safety. I love this kid. <laughs> he is such a good football player. Very instinctive. Has a great feel for the position and is just a bullet when he recognizes run. I mean, he triggers so quickly when he sees that ball handed off. It's not often, obviously. That's only James Williams. It's only a second carry in the ball game. You see how quickly Greg Eisworth comes out of that free safety spot and makes the collision at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, second carry for Williams. He's got five catches on five targets. Minshew moving around in the pocket, dumps it off. Winston on the catch back into Iowa State territory. It's going to bring up third down and about 14. So Greg, right here on defense is what Iowa State wants to be. They want to be a zone team, keep the ball in front of them, limit explosive plays over the top, and tackle in space, and create a little bit of hesitation from the quarterback like they did right there. They'll take those dump offs all day long. All day long, too. And if you're Washington State here, you, you probably think in four-down territory. I mean, just knowing where you're at on the field and just how aggressive Mike Leach has been over the course of his career. So maybe two downs to get it if you get a real positive gain here on third and long. Minshew runs into his own guy, then eludes an Iowa State player. Now throws it downfield. It's tipped and incomplete. Intended for Sweet. Fourth and 15. You would think the Washington State will punt the ball here. They will. Yeah, you have to because he didn't gain any yards there on third and long. That was a nice play defensively by the aforementioned Eisworth. Man, he is a player. And he's the reason why Iowa State can be a little different defensively. They play with three safeties on the field, Eisworth in the middle. He's the reason why they can do some things that are unique. He makes a great play on third and long there. A lot of shifting by Washington State, but that's just eye candy. Here's the punt. And I don't think the return man knew where the ball was. You wonder if the Gunners for Washington State did because it ends up in the end zone for a touchback. Midway through the third quarter, Iowa State with an opportunity to take the lead on this drive down four. David Montgomery has been so good over the course of his career, and some of the intricacies to his game have really come out here early in the second half. Purdy got to take a shot. He gets drilled. Butler, one-handed catch, and then rips it away from the defender. On the jump balls, you got no shot as a DB against that guy. Wow. Give me that. Vertical. What a catch by Hakeem Butler. Montgomery drilled in the backfield by Dominic Silvels. Negative play. Take a look at the catch by Butler, but also the hit on Brock Purdy, who's completed his last nine passes. Get leveled by Willie Taylor. Yeah, you saw his center. Colin Newell, I believe, is who that was. Tried to save a life, but couldn't do it in time. <laughs> they love the effort by the center, but <laughs> Brock Purdy clearly seems to have ironed out some of those issues he was having early in the game and is really starting to showcase some of that ability we saw in the second half of the season. Also has a rushing touchdown here tonight. Hands it off to Crony, who's got some running room outside. Drag down, close to the first down, and he has it at the 29 by Skylar Thomas. A 13-yard pickup for Sheldon Crony, who's the backup, came in with only 21 rushes on the year. Offense really is trying to emphasize the run game so far here in the second half. And then use play action off of it. Purdy rolling out. Throws back across the middle incomplete. But it's interesting. They've got guys that have carried the ball this year. Crony has had a few attempts tonight. Johnny Lang and Nuwagu. But all those guys average about two or three attempts a game. 
It's all David Montgomery. It's amazing. <laughs> He's had over 600 carries in three years, and most of those coming in the last two years. Yeah, they're, they're not afraid to feature their guys. That's for sure. I mean, they... I mean, when Matt Campbell got here, he inherited a roster that had some talent, had some pieces, and they had to figure out ways to make sure they were creative in getting him involved, both in the run game and the pass game. Here's Real Mitchell, the backup quarterback, in yet again. They fake it to him and hand it off to Montgomery. You know at some point they're going to hand it to Mitchell. <laughs> They've done a good job against uh, Montgomery off that fake. Comfort made the tackle, the nose man for Washington State. What's going to happen, too, Dave, is they're going to hand it, and he's going to throw it. <laughs> yeah. I imagine there's a few different variations yeah. over that jet sweep motion by Real Mitchell, the freshman quarterback. That was a good job, though, by Washington State up front to force a third down and long. And keep in mind, Connor Asali made a 50-yard field goal at the end of the first half. Initially, it was ruled 51. It was changed to 50. Could have made it from 55 or longer. Purdy. Going to lead the pocket and take off, and he gets out of bounds, but will not get the first down. So you've got a 37-38 yard try here for your kicker. It's fourth and one. What do you do? I'm going for it. With the way they've been moving the football so far here in the second half, especially on the ground, uh, I'm keeping my offense on the field. Not even, a, not even a thought, not even a second thought. I'm with you. I like it. The way they've run the football here in the second half, you have to think, David Montgomery is probably going to get this ball on a run play likely between the tackles. 20 carries on the night for Montgomery. Number 21 is a first down inside the 15-yard line. Right at 100 yards on the day and now over. Seventh 100-yard game, 15th of his career. And a great job by the offensive line there, too, especially the left side, really surging and taking advantage of their size advantage against Washington State. You know, the other thing about Montgomery, only one lost fumble the last two years. Don't say stuff like that. That's, <laughs> that's where you knock on wood. To the end zone, Butler almost got it with one hand, but couldn't pull it in. I like the idea and one-on-one -on -one coverage. A pretty nice throw, well covered. On the perimeter by Marcus Strong, trying to work that deep ball. And Butler can't get that left hand back to help secure it. Marcus Strong had an interception for a touchdown in the first half, called back because of a taunting Violation. Washington State did score, though, still. Montgomery breaks a tackle in the backfield, puts his foot in the ground, carries defenders down to the five-yard line, right in front of the Iowa State fans in that end zone. What a run. Spin move. Circle. Boom. All one. It's a lot of knee surge forward. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. This guy just seems how to always maneuver around tacklers, fall forward. Incredible that, balance. He's got great balance, great center of gravity. Really keeps his weight low, runs behind his pads. It's a heck of a run by Montgomery. And they run it on third and seven. And Montgomery is bottled up at the six yard line. Why do you think they went with that? Well, I think it was an RPO. And when he got two high safeties back there and a favorable run look, he decided to hand it off, which is a good, which is a good decision based on the RPO. It's just, and I don't love it, not on that down and distance. Would have opted for a standard drop back pass and try to force it into the end zone. Especially when you have, again, a guy at 6'6", who's already made a one-handed catch in this game. We've seen time and again throughout the year him make great catches against good coverage. So a Sally, a much shorter attempt than he had at the end of the first half. He puts this one through, and it's a one-point game just outside a minute to go in the third. Hakeem Butler has been featured. It was challenged early in the season. 
against Iowa, really played poorly. Did not have a good game. It was the first game of the year. Came back and has really responded to the challenge that his coach, Matt Campbell, has put on him. He said, man, you can be as good as you want to be. And my goodness, has he responded. Just an incredible talent that's been on display tonight. First Cousins with Andrew and Aaron Harrison played at Kentucky and now in the NBA ended up moving in with them when Hakeem's mom passed away after a fight with breast cancer when he was in high school. Here's Travell Harris on the kick return for Washington State and he's up to about the 27. But how about the Cyclone defense holding Washington State scoreless in that third quarter. It's a one point game in San Antonio as we go to the fourth. Welcome back to the Valero Alamo Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. With Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville, I'm Dave Pash in San Antonio. A packed house here to watch a good ball game between two good teams, Washington State and Iowa State, two programs on the rise. With Mike Leach and Matt Campbell at the helm of their respective schools. Minshew. A check it down here. James Williams goes over the top again. Second time he's hurdled an Iowa State defender. That was Braxton Lewis. He jumped over. It was Brian Peavy in the first half. Gets decent yardage there. And as far as Washington State is concerned, I mean, that was only their 14th snap here in the second half. I and mean, they haven't been able to generate much of anything. That's a credit to Iowa State's defense. It's time for Gardner Minshew and this group to get in rhythm a little bit with that underneath passing game. They got five yards on first down. Now Minshew throwing it into traffic and not much on the game. Pulled down by Winston. PV and Eisworth on the takedown. So it's third and two for Washington State. Iowa State the number one scoring defense in the Big 12. When John Haycock got there that first year they gave up about 31 points per game. The next year, that dropped to 21, and they were right at that again this year. They really have an excellent coach. He's at both these schools do. Let's see if Washington State goes with that little tunnel screen that they've used on third and short a couple times with some success. Through the hands of the intended receiver, Calvin. It would have been a first down, but he couldn't hang on. Fourth down and two. And Washington State's going to have to punt it back to the Cyclones. And a perfectly thrown football. Guys, outside of the, the game and the weather in the Apple Cup versus Washington, you're going to have to go back a long ways to find back-to-back -back three and outs. That's a great point. Yeah, I mean. For Washington State. <laughs> just haven't been able to generate much of anything here in the second half. Dragicevic. Back to punt is Dad Oscar spent 10 years Major League Soccer. Fair catch signal. Milton has it just shy of the 20 yard line. But look at how that defense Greg has stepped up in the second half for Iowa State. Yeah they really have gotten a little more aggressive. A couple more pressures and those defenders the defensive backs they've gotten a little tighter to the line of scrimmage press the issue it's been a good adjustment from Iowa State defensively Purdy will throw on first down pass was a little bit low and the catch is made by Akers he was down at about the 24 you get four or five yards there on first down it's all footwork Greg yeah just didn't have his weight yeah. underneath him and the long throw the ball dies as it reaches you can just kind of see just a little bit leaning back yeah. Not really transferring, kind of falling off of it just a little bit. And look at the yeah. rotation as it comes out of his hand. Yeah. Not a clean throw. All upper body. Out of the hand from Brock Purdy. Montgomery gets the carry on second and five and stood up by Pelora, but he does get the first down at the 30. Did the ball come out? Washington State's got the ball. Pelora has it in his hands. The officials have not ruled yet whether the ball came out. I'm not sure they saw it. And I tell you what, as Palour turnover, yeah, as Palour and Montgomery were going to the ground, it looked like Palour ripped that ball from Montgomery. And is there enough video evidence to overturn it? Can you see the ball here? That's why the ruling in the field was so important. He stood up. The whistle did not blow, saying forward progress is stopped. 
And it's pretty clear that Montgomery was clearly not down when that ball appears to be dislodged. Man, huge play right there by Pelour. You can't see it all when that ball comes out. Peyton Pelour, whose family has given so many years to the program. His dad, Scott, was a linebacker at Washington State. His grandpa, great-grandfather, all played at Washington State. Peyton's sister is married to Tosh Lupoy, is the defensive coordinator at Alabama. Minshew going to work here. Oh! Ball batted down by Ray Lima, who was thinking, <laughs> what do I got here? But he couldn't hang on to the ball. Still a pretty good play. Yeah, the big fella, the defensive tackle, getting out in space. They've thrown that halfback swing route over and over and over again. And Ray Lima thinks to himself, hey, I'm not going to rush the passer. I'm just going to kind of veer off, see if I can't follow Borgie. Maybe get my hands on it. That's a very heads up play by the junior. Three takeaways for Washington State defense. Can the offense capitalize? Minshew outside the pocket throws it away. Well covered downfield by Iowa State. Matt Leo had some pressure. Third down and long. How about this defense right now guys you have that turnover you're backed up and you're about to force a third straight potential three and out or field goal attempt. Yeah, remarkable and if I'm Gardner Minshew I got to look in the direction of my most talented wide receiver and right now I think he's got to look towards number 12 Desmond Patton who's one on one at the top of the screen. Pressure coming off the edge Minshew is hit. Gets out of there and pitches it ahead for a first down inside the 15 yard line. Tay Martin and knocked out of bounds near the 10. Ben Chu continues to make magic happen. Unbelievable. I start to the right. Doesn't like it. Comes back off that first progression. Breaks a tackle. And then how about the awareness to evade but still keep his eyes downfield and find Martin on the shallow cross out the backside. Really, really instinctive and aware play by Gardner Minshew. First and goal on the 10. Max Borgie picking a hole, burst through it, shakes off the defender and hits Pater for the touchdown. So all the turnover forced by Peyton Pelor is turned into points. Max Borgie, a true freshman. And it's an eight point Washington State lead. In Gardner Minshew, you must trust. Creating and escaping on a long yardage situation to keep the drive alive. And then one play later, Max Borgie. Rushing it in for the Cougars as they extend their lead. It's an eight-point lead for Washington State. 14 points off Iowa State turnovers. David Montgomery had it ripped out of his arms by Peyton Pelor. And then the Cougars punch it in. And now a touchback. Iowa State will start on the 25. True freshman quarterback Brock Purdy. They have won seven of their eight games. They played with him at quarterback. That includes a win over West Virginia at Oklahoma State. Baylor, the true freshman who a lot of people thought coming out of camp that he was the best quarterback on the roster. But with Kyle Kemp coming back and what Kemp did last year, winning at Oklahoma, the leadership that Kemp brings to the table, they let Kemp start the year, then he got hurt. And then Zeb Nolan, who's now transferred, stepped in. And he started a couple games, including against Oklahoma. But then against Oklahoma State, Matt Campbell made the switch to Brock Purdy, and he hasn't looked back. Can Purdy lead the Cyclones back again here? 
Purdy in trouble. Gets away from two guys. Keeps his eyes downfield and then ridden to the ground by Pelor. It'll go down as a sack and a loss of a couple. Trying to get a big play there. Getting aggressive on first down. It's been interesting. They've kind of gone away from the run game a little bit. I mean, there's still plenty of time left. You have your whole offense. I know timeouts, you're out of those, but surprised they've abandoned the run game down the stretch, given the sense that that was really the most effective part of their offensive plan in the second half when they were rolling just a few minutes ago. And now you're off schedule, second down and 13. Purdy looking downfield again, waits. Receiver comes free, and it's a first down catch to midfield. Allen is into Washington State territory. Chase Allen, who missed a handful of games with injury, comes up big here, a 29-yard gain. Well, it's first and 15 back in Iowa State territory now. Purdy steps back. Montgomery wide open. Look at him go inside the 30-yard line. Can they catch him? They do. He dives and comes up short of the goal line, but it'll be first and goal at the one. Hunter Dale saved the touchdown for now. What an amazing design. Well, let's see. Is David Montgomery tight rope the sideline? All the way. That foot looks good. That foot looks very close. Yeah, maybe at the four. The ball came out, but looked like he hit the ground and was down. So he got a lot going on there, but it did look like he was down. Penalty marker is down. He might have got a little bit too fast of a start as the offensive lineman might have moved start. early. Offense number 57. Five yard penalty, no first time. So a dead ball foul on Colin Newell, so they can still look at this here. Was he out of bounds? That's the first thing at the four right there. Hard to tell. And then did the ball come out? No, uh, he's down. Yeah, he's That's down. When the ball came out. Yep. But the spot was good. It looked like solid. And now, in your effort to try to snap it before the review, you jump off sides and back yourself up five yards. Watch the one-on-one -on -one for Hakeem Butler. Montgomery gets the carry and drags a defender down to the goal line. He's short. They rule him down at the one. Second and goal coming up. And the knee is down there, and it looks like the ball is short. They get right up to the line. Purdy takes a snap, a quarterback sneak, keeps the feet moving. And the officials haven't signaled yet whether he's in. Now they do a touchdown. Iowa State, and they'll go for two. Two rushing touchdowns for Purdy today. He had three all season. What do you expect here? Two point conversion attempt. So what I would do with a right handed quarterback, I would get Brock Purdy out to the right hand side. And give him a bit of a run pass option. on the perimeter and there's penalty flags down movement again by snap. Iowa State False start. offense number 74 five yard penalty retry so now you're going for two from a much further distance this takes away some of the options because the run option is totally dismissed here they were going with it though they were actually getting him out on the edge and trying to slide Seam Booker out underneath. But here, obviously, your play menu from this point of the field completely different. I just think in this situation, you have to look for your playmakers. And your best playmaker is number 18, Hakeem Butler, who's lined up in the slot. Purdy steps up, jump pass, caught at the five, but stopped short. Montgomery brought down by Willie Tabor. Taylor so it remains a two-point lead and again Iowa State out of timeout so be really interesting to watch when Washington State gets the ball back with a lead if they milk the clock knowing that Iowa State cannot stop the clock man Brock Purdy's gonna want this one back 
Not a bad effort, knowing that you got to lose it, you have to make a play. But look at Hakeem Butler in the back of the end zone. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is wide open with a lot of grass. And it's six foot six, high in the back of the end zone. That window's not going to close. If Purdy would have started there just a little bit quicker, this is likely a tie ball game because of the reception from Hakeem Butler. I mean, I, mean, I guess you're outside four minutes, so it's not necessarily a guarantee that you'd run the ball, but you think still, I mean, even if you go three and out, you're down to about two minutes when you punt the ball. Yeah. If you run it. It'll be a touchback. It comes out to the 25 because it... And they will throw it here on first down. And Minshew has Martin wide open, and he gets about nine yards on the first play. And the clock runs as well. And that's kind of how they melt the clock. Just really short passing game. Go with a little bit heavier protection. You try to involve your running backs as best you can because they're your best ball carriers. Right there, Minshew gets all the way through his progression to find Martin standing there as the number five option on the left-hand side for a gain of nine. Washington State taking the play clock down before they snap it. They haven't won a bowl game since 2015. More than a calendar year for the Pac-12 since it won a postseason game. Pass play here to Martin, catches it and gets the first down. The clock will stop it just to reset the chains. Fans tune in ESPN 3 for the postgame trophy ceremony presented by Capital One immediately following the game. So that cost Iowa State more than a minute by giving up nine yards on first down and then that last play which moved the chains. Now obviously those timeouts become so valuable and they had to spend two on an offensive drive that resulted in just three points. So just critical, critical spots, especially in the second half. Those timeouts are like gold and Washington State likely to take two minutes off the clock here. And then the other was on that failed challenge. They run Borgie here. He stood up. Short gain. Mike Rose in there first. So they won't have to snap it until about two minutes to go for second down. And in this scenario, I, if I'm Mike Leach, I, I just wouldn't even think about throwing it. I, I'd run it. Even if I gain half a yard on each of the next two plays, even if I lose two yards on each of the next two plays, still can punt back. But Greg, you could go no backs and go quarterback draw. Yeah, or just anything. Just knowing that you're going to give it back to them with under a minute to play, more than likely, if you drain the clock all the way down. I don't know if I'd risk dropping back and throwing it. But he's going to Minshew here, and they're taking a shot, and it's caught by Patman. First down. Just when you think. You got Mike Leach figured out. You got no idea what Mike Leach is going to do, really. I mean, that is, that is the opposite of what anyone would think in that scenario. I mean, the exact polar opposite. Here, let's throw a low percentage pass <laughs> on a deep ball, knowing that the other team has no timeouts. And a great job, too, by Patman staying with it all the way through. Yeah, because he didn't have it there. He still didn't have the ball until right there, squeezing it between his knees to control it. And now Minshew just going to take a knee. This is how it's going to end. They went for it, though. The Pirate said, we're, we're going for some booty. <laughs> On that back shoulder throw downfield. Because they knew that if they got the first down, they could just run the clock out. And in the spirit and memory of Tyler Helinski, Gardner Minshew and his teammates lead the Cougars to their best season in school history, winning 11 games for the first time. One more snap and that's it. Washington State 
28. Iowa State 26. Mike Leach showered with Gatorade. And a score record, 11 wins for the Cougars. And the first Pac-12 bowl win in a year. Incredible season for Gardner Minshew and the Cougars. They earned it, man. I mean, Gardner Minshew is one of the great stories in college football this year. Brock Purdy and Iowa State, they'll be back. But tonight's all about Washington State, man. What a season. What a job by Mike Leach and Gardner Minshew in creating magic over and over again en route to the best season in school history. An Alamo Bowl record, 35 completions for Gardner Minshew, throwing for 300 yards, two scores, rushing for another one, leading Washington State to a 28-26 win. Great year for Iowa State as well to be the second straight 8-5 season for Matt Campbell, but this is a program on the rise. Could be the final game for Hakeem Butler. For Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville, I'm Dave Pash. Coming up next on ESPN, it's Sports Center. So long from San Antonio.